Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School! Oh, this week we're going to get into our final installment of our Pedro Almodovar Festival with Time Me Up, Time Me Down from 1989. Let's dive on in. All right, everybody, I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash hear, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the places and spaces that people find good media, uh, as well as... Uh, other stuff. Other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, wherever our stuff is, there's probably other stuff that you don't, you should not <laughs> go anywhere near. Um, uh, so this is the final installment of our Pedro Almodovar Festival. What a ride. Uh, yes, what a ride indeed. This is 1989. I saw this when yeah. I was way too young to have seen it. <laughs> yeah, NC-17 as well. Yes, well, I think that that was... I remember that I saw it when I was living overseas uh, <clears throat> on BBC. And, you know, because, again, like, NC-17, that whole concept is very Western American bullshit. It's true. I was reading the, one of the films that was instrumental into bringing this NC-17 yes. rating into the U.S. Um, Miramax kind of took the MPAA to court and because they gave it an X. Well, because there was this. X, come on. Yeah, like, there was this. There was Sex here. Lies and Videotape. Yeah. There was, and a handful of others. And really. But they had to keep appealing mm -hmm. appealing things to get the nc-17 rating which even that seems like a little like these days no way well you know one of the reasons why they were concerned and wanted the nc-17 they were afraid yes i heard this. they were afraid <laughs> that people were going that men were going to go and start kidnapping women because it's like the, the like the movie didn't play by our They'd atypical rules. young men to kidnap yeah. women out of when, lust listen listen <laughs> If if you are going to try and kidnap a woman and you think it's going to turn out okay, if you are not 1980s Antonio Banderas and a pair of white denim jeans hot, <laughs> don't worry about it. It ain't going to fucking happen. She's going to call the cops. You're going to go to prison. That's the only way. That's the only way any of this shit's going to turn out good Let for you. Get to where this movie gets. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, that's the only way that, that you would have anything to worry about is, like, are the men watching this movie that fucking hot? They're not, so you're probably okay well, with is, just giving it an R. This is pre-Desperado as Dude, well, this right? is it. This is the beginning. This is the nadir. This, this is, is how it all starts, movie? I think. Oh, interesting. Or it's, or it's, like, way, way up there. It's way, way early in his career. Yeah. But I remember, uh, just to go back to this idea of, like, sort of when I saw this, you know, obviously in America at the time, you had guys like Jim Jarmusch doing stuff like Down by Law. Sure. But then in, in Europe... Uh, uh, movies like Time Me Up, Time Me Down, The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, yep. uh, 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 Rosie and Sammy and Rosie Get Laid. Like there was a handful of like indie, sexy kind of comedy now, stuff. Should and this like, even be? This is R. Uh, no, I mean it's it's it's. I mean it's a hard R because there's a lot of nudity in it, but that's it. But 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 again, like I just remember that there was this sort of like indie influx of stuff that was happening in the late '80s, early '90s. Sure. Um, Pushing the envelope. Yeah, and like that's and I, and and like revisiting this now, again the saturated colors, the sort of like fun, weird character development that uh, uh, Almodovar is totally known for. I remembered feeling like, oh yeah, I remember this weird attitude. It just in terms of art direction and the way the characters acted, where I was like, I remember other stuff like this. There's a great Danish film. Uh, called Obel, uh that deals with like weird sexuality, but again, like kind of looks like it's all covered in cotton candy, you know, in terms sure. of the way that it looks. And I was like, a Neil Mar M Morricone did the music here too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, he obviously has like, like seriously, like five hundred films he's worked on. I so will say, most one notably, people would know him from like Quentin Tarantino. Stuff. Yeah, totally, or spaghetti western, like yeah. post, you know, that kind of era. Uh, I was going to say one thing I noticed by the time we got to our fourth Almodovar, Almodovar film is much like Wes An Anderson, he has a font. He, he has does. that like weird. He does. It's It does almost kind of look like that. Uh, uh, what What's the 
Wes Anderson font. It's also our font. Yeah, uh, it's a it's Futura. Futura. Yeah. It's like Futura, but less rounded and then uh, like lettering inside the lettering he kind did, of a vibe. He does this thing with the moving graphics, though, that is definitely his trademark where it's just like zooms Ooh, in. It pushes it. in, they yeah. They don't do it here necessarily, but he does have that font at the beginning. And maybe I think... Later in his career, it developed into. But it's into pretty like rad that. that it's like it's kind of his since, trademark. Yeah, since '89, I was like, oh shit, we saw this in all of his other movies. Yeah, yeah. Like it's his trademark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's always like neon or something. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's like this like weird saturated color. It's very different from the other colors. So uh, you did this to me on 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 our last one, but but give me a, a little bit of an overall impression about Time Me Up, Time Me Down. Obviously, this is the oldest film of his that we've done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but before we get into synopsis and everything else, just vibe. Um, overall, this was definitely my least favorite. Um, not as stoked about this one as the other ones. I didn't feel like it was as transformative. It, tram, transformative. And um, I, you could see, especially watching his other stuff, how he's grown Yeah. Um, as a director. Um, a lot of it has to do with plot stuff, um, for the most part. Like, it's an interesting thing, but I kept reading this was a comedy, and I was like... Where's the comedy? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get this at all. So uh, we could get into some of the, the reasons why or whatever, but, like, no, at no point... Like, I took this as seriously as the skin I live in, I think. I mean, to a degree. Maybe it's because I had watched that, uh, you know, Before, recent, recently yeah. or something where I was, you know, thinking it was going to be that. But, I I mean, do you feel like this is a comedy? I feel like it's a comedy in the same way that, like... But, okay, Abby and I were talking about this the other day. What genre is Pulp Fiction? Mm, I guess just like a... I don't know, it's a crime movie. Right, but usually when you say crime movie, you're like, oh, it's a thriller. No, yeah, I mean, but that's... I mean, yeah, it's a comedy crime, I mean... It's as much as. Do you see what I'm saying yeah. though? You like, like if you really had, if you had these yeah. parking lot, uh, you know, uh, carports where you're like comedy, thriller, drama, horror, sci-fi, <laughs> you'd be like, I don't. It's not a drama, and you're like, if you told somebody it was a comedy, and they'd never seen it. I mean, the beauty is you can mix those genres. And, and I feel like that that would tie me up, tie me down. It's another one of those things where they're like, well, you get, you have to click one of these boxes, and you're like. I mean, I don't, it's not, it's not really a drama either, though, because it's like, again, from an El Madovar standpoint, you're like, it, how much danger is she actually in, in a yeah, lot of these I, I scenes? Feel, like, I feel like she seems well, like she's, I, I in, don't know. I think he's got a level of danger in him. I mean, we open this scene where he's in a mental hospital and they're like hey judge says you can go you're back in society right but he's also been sleeping with the director for yes, like yeah. however many years Which makes right me think he has you know i mean throughout this movie he never really seems to have a regret for what he's doing no it's, i agree it, it i seems agree completely normal for him to walk into her dressing room and steal totally uh, ten thousand dollars and uh you know uh, all these intricate things her underwear whatever it is yes and like it seems like a oh yeah i should be doing this seems i mean if i can get in here i should be able to take whatever i want and i guess again and i there's keep... a joker level of insanity there to me sure no i totally agree but i guess i keep going back to this idea of morality within his movies sure. and i'm like he's He's just hang. He's hanging out with this guy, and so I mean, we're hanging out with this sure. guy. You know, yeah. yeah um, but like, does he ever seem like? Seem like I don't know. I'm no, sure. no. I know what you're saying. No, he never. He never exudes any normal human emotion <laughs> that do, that does not require a level of like fantasy. Yeah, he's completely within that fantasy. He's delusional. He's delusional. Yeah, but it's like. It, you know, I, whether, I also whether it's him thinking that she's gonna fall in love with him. I mean, let, let's get into some of the nitty gritty. Okay, here. so so yeah, so we have our main character, uh, 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 and and Darius, he gets released uh, from the Ricky, hospital. Ricky, yeah. he's mm -hmm. he's a uh, twenty three year old psychiatric patient, mm -hmm. um, and he uh, is obsessed uh, with Marina, who is a former porn star and drug addict. Um, who, but like, he, how are we supposed to know that until like a little? I mean, yeah. I mean, I well, it, it actually, when we very first introduce her, we don't um, know that. No, we do because the reporter. Oh, that's right. The that's reporter right. is like, what's it like? You know, is that's is, right, is right. on this movie set, 
um, and, and, and this journalist is like, well, you know, she was a, a weird movie they're making too. Like, this weird horror film. But this, then like, well, and I think that there's a lot of subtext here of like the way that the director is obsessed with her uh, when he's, when they're done filming, he's at home, like watching old porno videos of her yeah. and like calling her and just being super inappropriate. Oh, he, yeah. he decides he's, in the moment that she's not going to die. She's going to be the hero of the movie. Because she didn't put panties on. Yeah. And he's like, that's why, you know, and you just go. And so there's like a weird, again, like knowing everything we know later about Amadovar, there's this weird subtext where it's like, uh, Marina is just an owned woman, no matter what she does. Yeah. Right. I mean, she, even the, that director Maximo, I think is his name. Um, you know, like like you said, he's just fawning over, the and he whole has these time. expectations. Just, why wouldn't? You, why aren't you coming to my birthday yeah, party? I'm the like director, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. And, and so you just go, well, this is like what she's experienced her whole life. So like her later decisions about how to deal with with him uh, being her kidnapper makes perfect sense actually because hmm. like I don't agree with that. Well, I I think that oh okay. Well, let's let, we can get into that. But I just think like what, the more I thought about it, having rewatched it again, I was like. That makes sense because of who she already is, I thought. I guess maybe to a degree, but to me there was no defining moment or action or moment, something in the movie that made me think, ah. Here's why. Here's why. Yeah. Here's why everything's going to be just okay in the end. <laughs> oh, I don't think everything is going to be okay. Oh. I, I oh. don't think everything, anything, oh, everything's going to be okay. Uh, to me, the ending, they, they play, they, to me, it was a huge cop out uh, at the end to, to make it. Maybe it won't be okay, but uh, to me, the justification of what ends up happening, there was none. There is no justification to why she ended up doing you know just like he did in the skin i live in being successful um and transforming that uh you know uh you know vera and uh, vincent into vera um there was no transformation like aha moment of why she felt justified and thinking like it just seemed like next scene she's in love with him oh 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 i uh, okay 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 Let, let's let's get more into it and then we can we can talk about this because i i this is very interesting okay so so he basically yes he's obsessed with her he uh uh ricky goes into her dressing room steals a bunch of stuff gets her keys like or not or, or, yeah he steals her keys. he steals her keys Follows takes her to her apartment takes this wig <laughs> It's so weird. That's yeah. big wig. I mean, and he does like there are there are a handful of moments where he definitely exudes like, oh, this is a crazy person. Just even out in public when he's well, I mean, like he just playing released, the drums. He just on got stuff. released from a mental hospital, yeah, yeah. and then he goes and captures a porn star. Yeah, so. I mean, I mean, other than that, I mean, out in public, <laughs> like even when he's getting like new rope to tie her up with, yeah. and he's got the the little. Uh, uh, a screwdriver and he's playing drums on him like doo, 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 doo. Yeah. and even the guy that's working there is looking at him like what what's happening yeah um he's in his own world so so he kidnaps he kidnaps marina it's okay though all he wants to do is marry her and have a family yeah he needs to kidnap her long enough that she falls in love with him which spoiler alert <laughs> it works it, it works but that's why I got an NC-17 rating is because you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to celebrate that. Um, well, what, what is the famous thing where you fall in love with your captor? What is it called? It's Stockholm syndrome. Ah, yes. The Stockholm syndrome. Yep. Yes, exactly. And 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 I do think that's exactly what's happening here, right? Yeah. Is the Stockholm syndrome? Yeah, totally. And I think so. We're skipping around a lot here, and that's okay. Yeah. Because not not a whole lot else. I mean. You, you just hang out with him getting captured. And honestly, like, f it was like an hour into this movie. I'm like, where's this going? I didn't know where it was going. And right. honestly, they're just looking for drugs for half of this first part of the movie. Yes. And so I'm just like, so is this a drug movie? Like, where? I, I, I just, I, I didn't, it didn't capture me like his other stuff for sure. Right, right, right. Well, and again, I think uh, it's an old movie. Yeah. You know, it is 1989. Yeah. I think that at the time... It was. I guess that's part of it. Is I was seeing it's it back through. I was seeing it back through the, the eyes of one eye. You have some kind of nostalgia attached to it. Totally. Where it's like at that time, it was like this is wild, and the sex scene in it was like this is wild. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like a sex scene that's that long it took him eight days to produce that. Well, and sex you said scene. you saw it too young as well, right? So oh, there's yeah, a reason sure. you watch Tie Me Up, Tie Me Down. <laughs> You're like, let's don't. You, it wasn't because of your love of Almodovar. Let's, let's, let's don't put too that. fine a point on it. 
<laughs> I was a young man. I was in my prime. Uh, but uh, 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 so, so you know, yeah, all that taken in, like, I think that it was very radical for its time period. But Totally understand that. Yes. Again, hopping around, he, he goes out to get her drugs, gets the shit beat out of him. Mm-hmm. Like you said, this switch is flipped. She starts to so care she for him. sorry for him? And then sleeps with him. And then from there, we're off to the races that because actually she cares. Because he's a good fuck? Probably, maybe, maybe that's part of it. But the point I was going to make is, after that, uh, her sister finds her, yep. right? Rescues her. Mm-hmm. And then we get this, like, oh, feel bad for Ricky montage where he goes off to like his old house that's all yeah i mean that's torn down and this is the end of the movie that's i'm going to the end of the movie because Mm -hmm. she uh marina and her sister go and find him right and it's this like beautiful reunion and immediately her sister forgives him yeah they all get back in the car together they start singing this song together and much like the ending of the graduate what happens then is all of the gas in the tank of this forlorn passion runs out in Marina. And if you watch that last scene again, mm-hmm. they're both singing together. He's got his arm around Marina. She's driving and she starts crying. And she's not stoked at all. Mm-hmm. And even though the music is them singing and this whole thing happening, all of that Stockholm syndrome where they had gone back and found him and got him in the car and now everything's going to be okay for the rest of her life. You see it, in my opinion, all dribble out of her system. It, all in that moment. And that's why the music does not continue. If, Once the car turns and goes down the road, it goes back to the, the original theme song. And there's this weird disjointed If, that, if that's vibe. what you were supposed to feel, it should have been more obvious because I did not really grasp on to you didn't that. that's what i got that's and, what i got out of that that still doesn't i mean yeah I, I to me like the fact that the sister forgive forgave him so quickly i i was just kind of like you just met this guy and all you've heard i mean i think she's trying to be supportive of her sister but her sister is obviously she like got kidnapped for how long <clears throat> well well but think about it this way her sister has a history of like when they couldn't find her in no way did her sister think, oh, she's been kidnapped. She's like, she's off on one of her crazy adventures yeah. again. They were glad she's doing... she got kidnapped because she's not on a bender. Well, no, I think that she just tries to be supportive. She's like, oh, okay, well, she's alive and she's here. But he's been holding her hostage. I mean, I agree. I agree and, and with the you. The guy is like, oh yeah, you should, we should, you should keep seeing him. That sounds cool. I mean, I agree with hey, you. You need a job? I'll find you a job. I know, when we get I know, back. I know. Like, but what I'm saying is, is it's like. To me, there was a very interesting twist to have everybody be supportive rather than being protective of Marina. And then she's in the car and she's going, oh, yeah. See, that wasn't, that wasn't as glaring as, as, I mean, I'm glad you saw that and that could be happening. But to me, that was not as obvious. Okay. Um, and maybe that's fine. That's Almodovar. You need to figure stuff out. But if this movie was made today... Even if it was made by Elmo Dovar, it would be so different. Oh, yeah. Completely different. Oh, completely agree. Um, a fascinating movie, you know. Um, it just didn't grasp me, and, like, the performances are good, and, like, he's really good, and, like, you want to see what's going to happen, but it, it, to me, it took an easy way out. Like at the end, like I, I was just yeah. Like, I guess it's not things. as complex as, but I think like, actually, it didn't earn that ending. Nothing happened. Other than like, I don't know, and maybe I, it's the slowly chipping away. At well, stuff, I feel like, like well, and that's that's really interesting. I actually would say it didn't earn it for me. I, I would say it didn't take the easy way out by taking the way out that it did. That if the cops had shown up and arrested him, or if she would have shot him, or something like that. I'm not even saying something like that. Something happening, but in their relationship for. Uh, for her to truly feel that way. Other, okay, other, okay, okay, that's understandable. Other than wanting to get out of there. Yeah. Because if it would have ended with her, you know, killing him or something, you know, she's playing him to get out of here. Let, all right, I'll have sex with you. Right. Or whatever. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, uh, the skin I live in. Yeah. No, you're right, you're right. And I agree, that, that wasn't earned. I guess I felt like 
it was subversive enough in the fact that it did turn into a happy love story and rides this wave but up. Why should we be and rooting then drops for them? down? That's, that's what I'm saying. Is that that's the uncomfortable middle zone <laughs> that I kind of like about that it? Is that it's like in. is that it's fucked up? That you're like this is fucked up, yeah. and that she also, like I said, rides that wave until they're in the car and everything's safe, and a lot of that 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 good friction and tension is gone. That she's going. Oh, what did I do? You know, oh, yeah. what have I done? I, I, I like, that's kind of what I... Not, I noticed her not singing, but I didn't see any, like, obvious distress of, like, oh, shit, what did I get myself into hmm. kind of stuff. And, like, no way that dude's fucking sticking around. Sorry. It's not like you're... No, there's gonna, no yeah, way. He's yeah. going to be gone in a month yeah. and kidnap someone else. So let's 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 talk he for a minute. He looks like Freddie Mercury with <laughs> that mustache. He does, I know. <laughs> this, it's, well, it's the white jeans. It's the white jeans and the but, fake mustache. Oh, it's the mustache. Oh, yeah. It's just Antonio Banderas wearing it. <laughs> um, so let's talk about... So the scene that actually did give this, the NC-17 on its American <laughs> the release. The toy diver. Let's talk about the toy diver, okay? Yeah. The toy diver is a little wind-up toy. He's got a he's little... He's taking a bath, right? He's got a little machine, you know? And this is actually the the uh, a very edited version of this, I believe, is in the trailer, is in the official trailer for this movie. That That's what got it the NC-17, is that this little toy goes like up... Close to uh, her vagina. Yeah, it goes up to her vagina and gives her pleasure. That's literally in the NC-17 like article about it says gives the toy gives the woman pleasure on screen. <laughs> but what I couldn't help think about was a tiny tiny man next to a giant vagina. And we mentioned this a little bit when we did uh the skin I live in. But the insane that we didn't mention it sequence I can't believe we did. Because there I was so about, much other stuff to talk about, but yeah. for some reason we missed talking about this fake silent film and talk to her. Yeah. That is like, and you know, this is a whole, I don't know if you're aware of this. This is a, a whole like sub genre fetish that there's like bajillion websites of online of being a tiny man uh, oh, yeah. with a giant woman. It's a whole thing. Well, the shot, you know, it looks very realistic, yeah. and how they shot it, like, yeah. like did a good job. Like, they did a great and, job. And you know, we're going to do our best to show you some of that footage now. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to turn out when we blur it all out, well, but you, you can, you'll get, yeah. you'll get. It's, just it's like, not hard. Give it a cursory glance. You'll what get a, a concept. Weird choice of a thing to get her aroused for, though. Like, it's just. <laughs> but it's also like I'm like, okay, okay. Let's just let's just put it out. Let's put all our cards on the table really quick. For a gay man who has a deep, profound love of women, mm -hmm. there like there's a lot here. There's a lot of subtext here of like being a powerless tiny man next to a giant vagina. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. There is no. This isn't a movie about spelunking and I'm grabbing at straws to make this into an argument. This is literally two movies He's with got tiny mom, mommy issues. Yes. Yeah, with these are two different Almodovar movies that have tiny men next to giant vaginas. <laughs> yes, one is plastic, but the other one is a flesh and blood man who walks into a vagina like it's the fucking Carlsbad Caverns. <laughs> It's wild. I don't know what it means. I am not like a big Freudian guy. I don't really know, but something is going on here, right? <laughs> There's a trend. There is a trend. It's trending in a particular direction. <laughs> um, very strange that like the second I saw the tiny diver and like in the movie, like it gets towards her and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's actually, that's her vagina. And and then you're like, oh, it's in the it's in it's 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 doing something that she's gaining pleasure from, and I'm like, I immediately thought of talk to her, and I was like, right. I guess right. if I'm thinking of a movie similar to this that is an actual comedy, huh. like something along the same lines where there's a captor, capty. Think of something like, I don't know, like Danny Boyle's Lifeless Ordinary, where it's Carmen yeah. Diaz and Ewan McGregor. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. is kind of similar at the beginning, like, oh, I hate you, but it ends up becoming... And, like, that to me is way more believable than how what happens here. Obviously, again, Alma Dovar paints those dark corners into his movies. And, you know, like, 
Banderas is awesome here. Like he does an awesome job, and um, you know he's so he's just a little too playful with his moods, right? And uh, mm. he says to Marina at one point, like Marina, I have nothing, so I have nothing to lose, which is again a Joker mentality, right? That is true. Yeah, right? like so, like nihilistic. Yeah, yeah, it makes you as an audience member be like, okay, so anything can fucking happen right now. Yeah, I guess you know you're totally right, and I guess I because I had seen it before. And it was really the only context I had. It's got weird music cues too, where you're like, "Oh, very is this strange." A caper movie. Like, well, and that's and I feel like that that's him subverting the style and the genre. He totally is. Uh, but but I think it's 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 whimsical, played whimsical, to kind of piss you off because the topic shouldn't be. And, and so that's what he's doing here. And then, hmm. and I will say this, that's wildly different than any of the rest of the movies that we've done of his, where it's like, if he had done that with talk to her, gross, yeah. holy shit, you can't do that, right? But it's kind of close to that. It's kind of close to that in the sense of like, this is a guy who's kidnapped a woman and is threatening her with violence to get her to love him, right? Like that's super messed but up. You, but you believe that his sister at the end... Is like, oh, yeah, just, yeah, sorry about all this. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't, like, I mean, like, I don't. Why is she so quick? I to... don't, well, for, I'll just say this. I don't believe any of it. <laughs> I think all of it's just a crazy fairy tale object lesson of a young Almodovar at the beginning of his career sure. subverting expectations to make people feel super uncomfortable. Like, okay. I think that's I, what I he's can doing. That. I can and understand. I, then I think he's playing with tone in certain moments when it comes to the horror movie and aspect of it early up. on. Yeah. Then the tying up thing, uh, the fact that it starts to turn into this romantic comedy and then her sort of silent realization of what she's done at the end. I think those are sprinkling in of what we see more of him, of yeah. him doing later in his career. But I think early on, this is some punk rock bullshit where he's like, for sure. Check, um, the, check out how weird I am. Right. And I, it's not I, as I appreciate that to a degree. It doesn't necessarily age well. Uh, and, and, yes, and, sure. And that's totally far, understandable. As far as like, you know, when she starts complying and taping herself up and tying herself up, I stopped I, that's where I checked. I didn't check out, but that's where I, the movie lost me. Right. That's where I'm like, okay, this is no longer believable. We even have a thing where she unties herself and sneaks around the apartment thinking, oh, yeah, she does have some devious plot twist coming. And that's the thing. This movie doesn't really have a devious no, plot No, she twist. ties herself back up and he's gotten the shit beat out of him and, and then they have happens. amazing sex. <laughs> there is this incredible Weird. scene of the roof mirror with the spider web where we see like nine Antonio Banderas asses having sex. That's pretty magical. <laughs> that was a great That's shot. That's your biggest takeaway? I mean, why Why can't it be? It was a cool shot. Those apartments are wild. That's the thing is like, I guess I, I because I'd seen it before, I knew what to expect. Everything else that you had seen that we've reviewed has larger, more important things to say. And I guess to me, I was like, yeah, it's not a romantic this comedy. Is like his- but it's like a it's like a sex caper blah whatever that came out during a period of time where it had like super gratuitous sex in it, super weird storyline. I mean, how many other directors from that era yeah, went on I, to do way more important I, work later sure. on? But their early stuff is like, you know, it's like the very first Fugazi so every, EP isn't as rad as their last sure, record. Of course not. But it's but you're like, oh, they were just like, they were mad and doing some shit. A great example of Sex Lies and Videotape. Right? Perfect. Like, yes, he went on to do stuff and Sex Lies and Videotapes, kind of a whatever movie. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it, it, yeah. it broke some barriers yeah. and, it, and it did some shit no one had but done no before. No one talks about it anymore. Yeah, because you're like, it was a jumping off point, sure. right? Well, that's I, what I, I see it, it as. I appreciate it from that aspect, but to me, it's a cop out of an ending. Hmm. Like, I loved where it was going. I didn't know what was happening. I, like, 40 minutes, hour into the movie, I didn't know what was going like, I where is always, this movie going? I guess I always you, locked on that last scene. Are you, so, sure, are you sure it was that scene that you locked on? <laughs> but it's a young man. I don't know what I wanted to do with my life yet. No, but but that last scene, I always, again, in that same way as, like, The Graduate of, like, once the, woo sure, sure, dies sure. down, there's this, like, well, whoop. Sure. What did we do? I, I like I, that, but... I, I always thought that was there, but it's interesting to to hear you be like, 
Well, that was it. I didn't. I, I, I didn't imagine see it this that is way. a pretty divisive movie. Um, I'm sure. As far as if people love it or hate it, especially um, in how it aged, I'm sure people are like, for sure. So, and and I, I'm glad we did this as part of the festival, though, just so we have that perspective. It was also his big break. It was the it was, one huh? that for him was like interesting. And I think part of it was the NC-17 scandal. Yeah, I, I think that that was a big That's got to be a big part of yeah. it. Where that's how he got attention. No, you know, and Antonio Banderas, like, yeah. being so young and, like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think it's, again, even with all that nostalgia or my own opinions about it, it is the weakest of the entire festival. It's yeah. it's the least. It's just, it, it's, it's the least up interesting. this whole movie for them to just forgive him. It's, to me, pointless. Like, what, mm. like, Why? Why just let him off the hook like that? No, and I agree. Maybe, maybe I it's because I like totally. to see people get their comeuppance or something. I don't know, but like, but like, I don't know. He seemed delusional the whole movie, and she seemed like the reasonable one. And then she's just like, "Yeah, okay, let's do this." She's also an ex like, porn yeah. star and drug addict, Adam. Oh, so yeah, her inhibitions are terrible. <laughs> Maybe um, in 1989 they are, no, and I get it. And you have to have it from that perspective too. So it's an 80s movie. I, I get, I get that to a degree. So um, interesting, amazing festival though. Like, yeah. wow, what a director. What do you so uh, rank them? Rank them for me. Oh, Volver, Skin I Live In, Talk to Her. The Talk to Her is amazing. Like, I, I, I don't want to say anything bad. Like, Volver just warmed my heart, and it's just a great movie. Um, and that's why I love it. Skin I Live In. It was just uh, a, a movie that just was kind of life-changing to a degree as far as like how he pulled that off wow yeah um at least from like a filmic history like wow i like we said in that review i've never seen yeah it's like like it's like a david blaine trick you're like dude he was encapsulated in ice (laughs) and he got out and he's alive yeah like it's like that it's the filmic version is amazing and has some crazy stuff going on that again is extremely original. i mean i feel like next year we could do another almodovar festival And come away with even completely different. Where, where are you at with the rankings? Uh, I would do. I would do the same as you. I w- like. I would do the same as you. I guess I would say and this is a total cheat, but I would almost say like two sides of the coin. One is uh, Volver, and the other is Skin I Live yeah, In. That, that one is like, like a close second. One is like makes me feel good about life and being alive in the world, and the other one is like the part of me that loves watching horror movies Mm -hmm. where it's just like it's it upset a part of me i didn't even know existed (laughs) (laughs) if there's another way to say it i don't know how like every like whenever i watch a horror movie and i get creeped out or scared in a way i never have before and i'm like whoa i didn't even thought of that I never thought of it. Now it's in the roster. It's in the roster with everything else. That's kind of the way I feel about the skin I live in. I'm like, I didn't even I didn't even know that was a thing that I could spend my time thinking about. But now it is. Yeah. Um and, and then talk but talk to her also just again, I would say and I, I know that you feel differently about about uh time you up, time you down, but I would say if, at least in my mind of what he was going for, his dismounts his Crazy, you know, orchestrated maneuvers and then his dismounts are always so impressive. Oh, yeah. Even, even you know, I mean, I would say for you, yeah, a time you have, time you down didn't work and it's dismount, but it was still super interesting that that's how he, that's how he decided to go with it, right? Like that that in its own way is super subversive. I mean, it that is, it's like it happy music and it, romantic comedy. And yeah. you're like, no, it's not. He threatened to slit his throat and hers. And yet, this is where we're leaving it. And like, I can see how you could say it's a cop out. That totally makes sense to me. But at the same time, I'm also like, that's fucking wild for a guy that we know for a fact from his other movies obviously knows better. So there yes. must be something else going on. Yeah, in there. I would love to, you know, leave a comment, whatever, if you guys know more yeah. you know, stuff about this movie that we we should know about. But yeah, fascinating director. So glad we got to know. Oh, him. me too. Me too. Um, wow, and, and just you know. It's to me. It's always important to look at around the world too, uh, you know, and and having a director from Spain and like uh, I don't know. It's just there's not a lot of filmic history there, and having having his his perspective has been well. Like amazing. we like we said from the very beginning, it's like he's 
been influenced by totally different shit than who we spend the most of our our, our, our time comparing to. Like yeah. he his influences are from again, like we were talking about, like the uh, Italian neorealism, and I'm like, that's a whole scene I barely know anything about. Sure, and that's like his bread and butter. And so I'm like, we got to watch some more of those films. Sure, yeah. So I don't know. Let's it's do it. So much fun. Awesome. So much fun. Well, uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you played along. If not, please like and subscribe. We'd love you to do so. Yes. Um, and then I don't know what our next festival is going to be, but we'll we'll uh, we'll figure it out and let you know. But we'll have a that one scene next week. And yep. um, thanks for watching. Bye, you guys. Bye.